Hi, I'm Elizabeth Pretty, and this will be a third of three videos that I'm putting up on how to load a brush. The first video was about how to select and choose a Chinese brush and how it works. The second was how to load and use the brush with only black to make gray marks. And this will be how to load color which is different. In the second video, Loading with Simple Gray, we discussed the differences between ceramic and ink pigments. In this one, we're going to show how to load your brush using wet watercolor. So tube wet watercolor. We're going to make green all on this one brush. So so it goes down and into the water all the way up to the top of the brush. You'll be able to see more clearly what's going on with this. So yellow there, that's easier. Yellow all the way to the top four sides and then you'll pull back and you can check it to see the yellow. Then the next color we'll use is a blue and the blue we will put halfway up into the brush. So I'm bending it halfway and jiggling it on either side and then the third side and then flop it over to the fourth side. I now have green and yellow. So I have a gradient between light green, well, light yellow and green. And now I want a darker green tip. So I'll go to a little more blue and jiggle it again but this time only in about the bottom fourth of the brush. Still goes on four sides to blend. Pull it to check it. And then we'll have the next color gradient, which is light yellow to dark green. And then we'll do the final color, which is to put black in the tip which stops the pigment from spreading and makes our final value adjustment to the darkest green that we can have. Notice that I'm not back up into the to the top of the brush anymore. I'm barely touching the tip as I mix, but I'm still hitting all four sides of the brush and then I pull back so that, that kind of distributes it at the end so that it's nice and blended and the last mark will look like this. So this is how you make these marks. The last one being a very dark green up to a light yellow and then the first one was the first one was yellow, the second was green at all with a gradient, the third one was darker green at the tip and this is with the black. Notice how this is a messy mark and this is nice and tight. The addition of the ink is what changes that. So let's, now that we've got this loaded and it's, it's ready to go, let's use this to make a little painting. So from here I can make a mountain orchid. So I will paint using the brush as loaded it's a little dry and so I'll pull into this medium water barely touching the tip of it to the water and what that'll do is suck more color up into the top it's feeling a little tight so I'm going to tip the black again into my load so that I don't, haven't lost all of my color and 
let's try this again right next to it. So one mark will be nice and dry, and the next mark will be wetter. So this one goes up, and then this one falls back down on itself. And the next mark will go up and not quite touch the other one. That gives you grass strokes. So those are grass strokes with gradiated color. Okay. From there, you can turn this into a little painting. And it's always fun to do some practicing. So pull, 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 pull. And what I've done there is make a stem for a mountain orchid. On the mountain orchid, you're wanting a brush that is smaller so that you can mix up a fairly even color. You don't really even want a lot of special color for this. You mainly want a, a kind of a pink color. And so you mix red all the way to the hilt in the brush, same way, over three times after the first one and then I'll put a little blue in halfway pull up a little bit more water and then purple in the tip that should make a mark like this so pink fading to purple and then I'll put just a little bit of black in the tip so that I'll have a nice easy to see dark mark at the tip okay so back to my little painting this particular flower is an orchid that opens up from the top so you paint a bud and then the next piece down will be a bud with a piece that might come off. Next piece down will be a bud showing maybe two pieces. The next piece will be a bud that's got some actual pieces coming off of it for real in this spot. And then the next one will be a clean mark for the pieces that you can see and the final one will be on the ground with other pieces that have fallen from other flowers and so that is how you paint a mountain orchid and we'll go ahead and pop this up graduated green and the parts to a mountain orchid if the stem is starting to fade you can go back and tighten it up so that you can see the stem better but you don't want to make that stem too dark when you first start because if you do you won't have any play in where you're going to put your little leaves so what you're seeing is the load and how to do it for a mountain orchid. And that would be a good place to stop with that particular one. In the next one that we'll do, I'll show how to mix other colors. Thank you.